Okay, we are running. And welcome to the Reloved Workshop. Took a delivery this morning of some nice little bits and pieces. Some uh, Scratocaster scrat, scrat screws ordered in from America. Um, nice little bits and bobs. Replace missing parts. Um, not expensive, well, not a lot. Uh, we have a, a couple of jack plug inputs there for uh, the guitar over there, number three. And uh, we have a couple of string trees also to uh, go onto one of the other guitars. And a couple of different nuts. So I've got a Tusk nut for strats here, which is a kind of expensive, quite expensive self-lubricating thing. And I've got uh, a Wilkinson or Vanson uh, nut here as well, bone nut. So it'd be interesting to see if I can notice the difference between the two, depending on what guitars I put them on. And I also got myself some feeler gauges in Imperial and uh, metric, so I can be a bit more accurate or be make, make judging the height of um, strings, actions, and also the uh, the depth of nut slots a bit easier. And to work on the nut slots, I have a very special little package in from the US this morning or last night, and I'll try and hold it up. It's a, a set of, I think these are welding rod nozzle cleaning uh, I don't even call them rods or something, but they're, they're, they're in a different uh, set of, whole set of gauges which match the gauges of the average medium uh, gauge strings on the guitar. And they're part of this, this bit about this length here is, um, is, is designed to cut into the, the nut. So these will, these will, this is a cheap alternative to the quite expensive guitar nut slot files that you can buy from places like Stumac, which, sure, if you're going to do this stuff professionally all the time, then you, you, I guess you want, because you can just see them and pull them off the wall easily. However, I'm trying out some alternatives. It's a windy day today. Trying out some alternatives before we, we you know, get into a position to buy more expensive things. So these are quite interesting to see how they work. Um, and be, got to be careful not to lose them. So I'm wondering whether to string them together and hang them somewhere. But the reality is you don't get to use them uh, by holding one end somehow. On the thick ones, it's okay. You can use them by pressing down like that. The thinner ones are going to be more difficult. And you're going to need something to hold them the other end to get them to work. But it's much better than the kind of a piece of string at the same time. Uh, what would really work would be some sort of uh, old key ring thing. So, yeah, I'm going to keep my eye out for that. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to do myself the, the favour of finding a, a piece of wire or something to catch them to so I don't lose them. Uh, that would be a, a really uncool thing to do, having waited different from the United States. So, First, first job is to catch them here. Put a garden wire, and I'm going to put them somewhere safe out of the way. I'm putting them on in, in the order. Should come. Just doing that visually. And I'm going to keep them to the other side. Yes, I'm going to visually find all the correct sequence of strings. Here's my control. up somewhere where I know I know where they are. As soon as I'm on the music. In fact I already know a guitar I want to favourite blue um, So these these can be I just angle somewhere Precious. Only get six. Very nice piece of eBay merchandise. Sort of story. From America with a handwritten note thanking me for buying 
banan. Must be a bit banan or something on some business with. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pack these out, get these out of the way, so that uh, I can get on with the what I came here to do this morning, which is do some fret work on the Encore Red guitar. Um, but I'm just going to cut these down a little bit, put them into my guitar part storage compartment, and I'll just drop these bags in as they as they come because they're small enough to fit and the rest will go in the rubbish as we clear the decks. Got a new pair of Granny's glasses uh, without scratches. Treated myself to that. Okay, so so here we are, back to reassess the red Encore, Encore, J, John Hornby Skews built uh, Strat, basic beginner Strat, which um, we bought down in Cornwall for Nineteen pounds fifty-eight. Um, body's very light, as I said before. Um, a bit scuffed. Not very happy looking. The, the, the not a very good paint job or or lacquer job on this. Um, and actually, would be quite a nice candidate for doing it again. However, I haven't got a supply of stuff to do it with, so we'll just live with this. And we might have a go at um, reshining some of the scuffed stuff that's been. I think somebody's put some stickers on. Um, so all in all, very light guitar. Um, Dirty, in need of a clean. Everything seems to work. Uh, action was revolting when we got it, but I've obviously we've taken that off and cleaned up the neck. So I've done already done a, a sandpaper, light, very light, wet and dry sandpapering of the fretboard to remove all the teenage finger goo, um, and had a look at the the frets. And the frets, are of course, are very tired looking. Um, certainly down here, they've got. I don't know if you can see, they've got. Um, it's hard to see perhaps in this light, but there, there's string indentations on the certainly the first three, possibly four frets from a, a, many years of playing open chords. That's one of the first things you see. Um, and there are some one or two high frets up here. Uh, I had a feeling that the way to deal with this one would be to just go at it with the, the six inch fret file. Um, just makes the job quicker and takes everything down at an even sort of rate. Uh, so to do that we still need to go through the process of masking everything off. And that isn't masking tape. Uh, okay, question is, here's my masking tape. So we're going to mask everything off and while I'm doing that I also need a piece of wood to serve as my chopping board. Any old chopping board would do. Claire's going to join me in uh, workshop shortly, so the door might go. So I will cut this video in a moment. Um, I, I'll just get going. I'll, I'll try and reduce the amount of, kind of boring stuff you have to sit through. So having said this probably four times already now on the various different guitars that I've worked on on these videos. I will repeat myself because the whole point about this is that uh, this video is unique to this guitar so you won't necessarily have seen the other ones because the, the videos that I send out or attach to these guitars are unique to each one and, and private to the owner so it's not it's not like it's on YouTube attracting angry comments and people telling me that the way I'm doing it is a total pile of junk and I should be ashamed of myself calling myself a guitar tech, which I don't, by the way. Uh, so a neat way of avoiding that is keeping these videos private, and they're only for your uh, viewing if you want to. Um, if you've bought this guitar, you'll be enjoying playing it. You might also want to do the video. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the usual thing of cutting uh, masking tape in a way that makes it possible for me to quickly do the frets, and bearing in mind the frets get smaller as they go up. It means that I have to cut the masking tape uh, in smaller, progressively thinner chunks in order to uh, fit to the frets. Otherwise, what will happen is your masking tape will be too big for the frets and it will um, it will go over the top of the fret, which is not what you want. You need it to be covering the fret board nice and neatly, but you don't want it, you want it clear, very precisely 
uh, leaving the fret uncovered so you can do the work on it. So you can probably see it's easy enough to do even with standard masking tape, you, you can do it just by pulling chunks off and wrapping it around on the first, the larger frets, but as you get smaller up here, even the smallest roll of masking tape is going to be too wide for that, so you have to cut. So I have it ready, prepared, to take some of the misery out of it. And uh, I'm not going to bore you as I go through all of this.